This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Before doing YouTube, I used to accept client works and one of my clients asked me why I didn't have a website. With social media these days, we sometimes like to assume that having an Instagram or any other social media platform is enough, but in reality, looking from the client's perspective, it's much easier for them to find their ideal artist where everything is laid out in front of them to look at as a whole instead of having to search the oversaturated social media. This is where Squarespace comes in. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business, from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. This is a place where you can combine all your pride and joy as an artist, from your best works in your portfolio, to the about page, to blog posts to share your experience, and even an online store with added analytics for you to keep track of your business. Or if you're like me, Squarespace also provides the space for you to link all your social media pages as well as the ability to upload my favorite YouTube videos that I made directly onto my personal website. All these can be achieved easily with Squarespace as they provide you with a very user-friendly platform where you can build your own website using one of the templates they provided where you can customize further. So if you're interested, please head over to squarespace.com for your free trial and when you're Ready to launch, you can use this URL, which I'll leave in the description box, using the code Nyanyani to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Hi everyone, this is Nia, and today I'm going to be painting something super fun, which is a bit of fish painted with loose and dynamic colors. I've done a few of these types of paintings in the past but I haven't made one for a while so I hope you guys enjoy this one. Like usual I started out by drawing out the rough outline. I only need the body to be fairly clean but as for the fins and tails I'm going to keep it fairly loose. This is the picture that I'm going to base this painting on. I just really love the composition and the movement of the fish, but I'm going to change the color scheme to blues. I don't know why, but with these types of paintings, these are just the colors that I tend to gravitate towards. But of course, you can choose your own color combinations or your favorite colors as well after you've understood the concept of how to place down the colors. As you can see, I'm only mapping out the fish and the tail very roughly. I just want to make sure that I have nice negative spaces of the reference picture, but I'm not going to worry too much about certain details like the folds. You can if you're able to, but I felt like that was a bit too much for me and I just wanted to get the essence of the movement. When sketching this out, I try to make the lines quite thin especially around the edges of the tails and the fin because i want the paint to be quite light and more transparent towards the ends of them so when i'm sketching this out i'm just very mindful of making sure that i'm not putting too much pressure on my pencil when i'm drawing the outline once I have a fairly understandable outline for me to follow, I'm going to go over the colors. Firstly, I have Turquoise Blue by White Knights, which is a very pigmented color. Then next, I have Cobalt Blue by Holbein, which is going to be another main color that I'm going to use. And next, I have Hansa Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith. I'm also going to be using a couple of tube paints. This is Red Violet by Sennelier. This is very nice and transparent, so I'll be using this for the edges of the fin and the tail for that transparent look. And next here, I have Indigo by Schmincke. This is, again, very pigmented and very dark, so I'll be using this for the darker areas instead of black to keep the vibrancy of the colors quite nice and bright. I'll also be using my favorite opaque white, which is Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martin, and my Fine Tech Gold for extra accents at the end. The dominant colors that I have chosen for this painting is the turquoise blue and cobalt blue, which I'm just going to alternate first for the body. Same thing still goes as any other paintings, 
where I try to roughly map out the value on the first layer, but it doesn't have to be accurate. So where the lighter parts are according to the reference, I'd use a thinner consistency paint, and as for the darker areas, I'd use a thicker consistency paint while alternating these two colors as the dominant colors. These two specific colors are very pigmented, so you can go really far in how thick the consistency needs to be for the darker areas. And I'm just going to add on to it while the surface is still slightly damp, so the paint will naturally blend together. I don't know if you've noticed that I used the tiniest bit of Hansi Yellow for the mouth just to pull the blue further into more of a greener tone, but I'll get into it next while we paint the fins and the tail. So for the fins and the tail, I'm using the same two colors as the dominant colors, but this time I am being a bit more careful with how light or dark the consistency of paint is because I want certain areas to look nice and light with a nice contrast of the shadows in order to depict the flowy look. The tail is also where I want to incorporate more dynamism in the painting, so I am trying to make very limited strokes from a medium load on my brush that I pull towards the edge, so it creates a nice dry brush texture towards the end, but this is something that I only want around the tips and not too much near the body of the fish. But if your brush load is too dry, then just add a bit more water and pull the paint further. This is also where I try to incorporate the other colors like the Hansi Yellow and the Red Violet just to create that nice pop of a different hue. If you've noticed on the right hand side of the tail, I used a bit of the Red Violet and because this brand is known for its transparency, I decided to apply it to the ends because I want the tips of the fins and tails to look more wispy. I'm going to also treat the yellow the same way, but because Hansi Yellow is actually very pigmented, I'm just going to be very careful with how much I activate it with my brush because I don't want the Hansa Yellow to turn too much of the blues into green. You can if you want more of a green turquoise for your final painting as the dominant color, but I want mine to still be on the blue side. So as you can see, I'm just using the Hansa Yellow and the Red Violet very lightly for this painting. I also tend to add more of the additional hues of the yellow and the red violet at the ends of the tails and fins because I still want to keep the blues as my main dominant color. This is optional though depending on how you want to take it. This is just a personal preference to have a dominant hue, but these types of paintings are very open to interpretation, so if you want several hues to be clashing into each other to create a different type of um, dynamic composition, you can also do that, but do it at your own risk because some colors might turn muddy depending on how you're going to create those gradations between certain hues. Now that the base paint is on for the whole fish and the first layer is also fairly dry, I'm now adding the second layer where I'm going to just map out certain areas which might be darker while using the same colors. For the darker areas, I used either the turquoise blue or the cobalt blue, but I like to also change it up once in a while with a bit of red violet for the lighter areas in shadow. I'm just using the reference very roughly here, not following it accurately at all, but just taking in the bigger picture of the shadow so I can keep this painting nice and loose. And I feel like that's the key to these types of paintings, so try to not focus too much on the details. This is where I start to incorporate some finer details. I like the sides to have more delicate lines even though it's not exactly realistic. And I also try to add on a bit more detail to the body first so I have a better idea on how to balance out the rest of the composition. For the scales, I use the darkest color that I have which is indigo 
and I'm only painting the scales along the darker parts with this color. You can also see that the back of the body was still a bit wet so the paint ended up blurring too much but it happens and I'll just wait for it to dry then layer on more paint but meanwhile I'll just add on more scales to the rest of the body. For the lighter areas of the body I used either cobalt blue or turquoise blue and I just basically follow the value according to the base color that I've painted. So if the base color is dark, I'd make the scales darker. And if the part of the body is light, then I'd use a lighter color for the scales so it follows the same contrast all throughout. I'm also going to paint the eyes and face basically. I added some lines with indigo for the mouth and I used the same color for the eyeballs. Then I just waited for it to dry and pull a tiny bit of the color so the rest of the outer layer has a very soft indigo color. Now this is where I start to add the fine lines on the fins and tails. For this, I use the reference roughly to see how they all connect to the body because sometimes you might have some connective parts like for the small fins at the front. But after that, I pretty much made it up myself by following the movement of whatever I've placed down in the initial layers. The key to this part is for you to make sure that your hands are steady enough to make long curvy lines and for your paint consistency to not be too runny so it doesn't bleed all over and for it to not be too dark but more of a medium consistency for now at least so the lines doesn't look out of place against the light colors that you've placed down for the base. You can also try to use a smaller brush for this if it's easier to control but I prefer using something a bit larger that holds more paint. The same thing applies for the details on the fins and tail as the scales on the body that we just painted. So for parts of the tail that has shadows as the base color, I'd use a darker color and for the lighter areas, I'd use a lighter color. You can use indigo as the darkest color, but indigo tend to be a bit more muted compared to the rest of the colors. So sometimes I'd like to add indigo to cobalt blue or turquoise just to make them slightly darker but not lose too much of the vibrancy or sometimes I like to also add cobalt blue or the turquoise blue into the purple to make it slightly darker for the shadows as you saw me doing. You may notice that in this tutorial, I'm not going into too much detail with the exact colors that I used in every specific part of the painting. That's because the colors will probably vary depending on what you choose the dominant colors to be for your own painting. And this, as I mentioned, is very much up to interpretation. The key here is to basically just follow the value but the hue can technically be any color that you choose to use. With the details here, I'm also building up certain dark areas by darkening the corners of uh, the darker base that I've initially painted. Most of the time, I've already established the lines in those areas or the details, but I would layer a darker tone on top of that certain corner and just paint on a section of the lines so it looks like a natural gradation. Lastly, another point that I forgot to mention is the importance of keeping the angles off each line so it follows how the tail or where the tail is facing and the direction of those lines so it doesn't become too jumbled up or like a messy scribble if you accidentally crisscross those lines. This is where the reference would help but as I mentioned, try to just take the essence of it without getting too distracted by the details of each curve. Lastly, with this paint, I'm going to go over the eyes again using a bit of indigo. I also felt like the eyes at the back are not supposed to be that visible and made the fish look a bit goofy, but that's okay. Lots of my animal paintings tend to have that silly face. And after this, I'm just going to follow it up with the details using bleed proof white. I added a bit of highlights for the eyes, then I'm just going to follow it up with a bit of white for the scales 
also for the fins and the tail. I just love the fact that this white is super opaque but it also makes it much easier for it to look overworked so just be careful to not go overboard as I so often do with white. For the head, I wanted to add gold accents and I felt like it looks too dark so I used a bit of white and I used a lot of water in order to glaze over it to just lighten that area. Then I'm going to follow this up using a thick consistency of gold and just dotting it around that area. I'm also going to add some dots for the scales for added accents. I also want to add extra shimmer for the ends of the tail, so I'll be glazing the silver over those areas. This is what the painting currently looks like. I felt like some parts of the tail were a bit too white or too light due to the silver glaze. So I'm just going to layer on a bit of color using the same color that's been covered by the silver but only for the details and lines on the tail and not full glazes. After this, I'm going to add final accents like splatters using the bleed proof white. And like usual, I'm going to also play some manually. And this is optional, but I decided to go all out with the shimmer or sparkle theme by painting small crossed stars with the white. For the white areas of the paper, I'm going to use some of the colors I've used for the fish for additional splatters then i'm also going to add a few final strokes with gold on the tail So this is the finished painting. I had so much fun with this one and I hope you guys will enjoy painting your own versions as well. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!